So the Holy Spirit was working on Nebuchadnezzar through the words of the prophet. By this time, Nebuchadnezzar was certainly wrestling with conviction. Daniel told him to repent, to heed the truth that God shared with him. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. For Nebuchadnezzar, as for all of us, the pull of the flesh can be strong. Would he call upon the Lord for help? God in his patience gave the king one year to repent. Verse 29. At the end of the twelve months, Nebuchadnezzar was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? Pride goes before a fall. Nebuchadnezzar procrastinated. He had warnings and a year to repent, but he didn't. Procrastination is a deceptive and deadly form of disobedience. Because of procrastination, not walking while having the light, the devil leads many into Christless graves. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, there are so many people out there who need you, who are so tantalized by the things of this world, the issues of life distracting them, and all of the excuses popping in their head, uh, in, all the impressions from the enemy and his minions. Oh, Father, please block them, help them, give them urgency and power to step forward and claim you by faith. Father, help these people come out. Help them all reach upon you, no matter how busy they are, no matter what's going on, please. Let them know that they, you love them and that they can be yours. Please help them in Jesus' name. Amen. So Nebuchadnezzar boasted, verse 30, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you, and they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. That very hour, the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. Nebuchadnezzar was going through a rough time. Pharaoh resisted God, and that didn't work out so well. God was humbling King Nebuchadnezzar for seven times. When it was over, he said, At the end of the time I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my head, my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, What have you done? At the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles returned to me, and I was restored to my kingdom and excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of Heaven, all of whose works are truth and his ways justice, and those who walk in pride he is able to put down. God did it. He humbled Nebuchadnezzar, and the worldly king admitted it, pride. The Lord did it. God showed patience, mercy, long-suffering. All of these things God showed with the self-absorbed pagan king who more than once tried to kill his children. God is so patient. The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. But he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Nebuchadnezzar didn't have to suffer what he did. It didn't have to go that way. God warned him, and the Almighty was working with him. Instead of attempting self-sufficiency, Nebuchadnezzar could have heeded God's prophet, turned away from sin, repented, and brought forth fruits of righteousness.
Ephesians 5, 9, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for the Holy Spirit working on everyone, including the Nebuchadnezzar in me. Praise God for His abundant mercies, grace, and transforming power. Heavenly Father, please give us all your Holy Spirit. Please strengthen us. Please give us your love. Reveal to us your truths. Guide us into truths. Bring things into remembrance. Help us, Father, draw near to you. And give us that precious, precious oil that we may be ready when you come. In Jesus' name, amen.